So ripple-driven development is about fast feedback loops when writing code. You evaluate code blocks and functions uh, as soon as you have typed them. And uh, ripple-driven development is something that I have learned from uh, Clojure and it really is a superpower. And developing uh, something without uh, being, being able to evaluate code would feel like taking a huge step backwards. And today I'm focusing a lot on Python, and so I wanted to find out if it's um, if this kind of workflow is possible here too. And it turns out it is. I have tried out some ideas and tools uh, that brings a similar experience to to the one in Clojure. And ripple driven development is not about typing code into a shell. You do all your work, all your code in your editor, because that's where you have like autocomplete, syntax highlighting, your favorite color theme, and you know, everything. And here's an example. I have my example Python project with a CSV files containing rows and columns, and also a uh, simplistic parser that transforms the CSV to a list of dictionaries. So I'm going to start using that uh, uh, parser and, 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 and the code. So I'm going to begin with um, importing it. And I think it's a good idea to wrap the call to that parser in a function. I'm going to pass in the, the path and just run the parser like that. Great. So I guess in usually my next step would be like um, uh, trying it out perhaps via via an API or in a website or even write a unit test. But I'm going to try something different. I'm going to use this REPL driven way of uh, writing software. And a common thing with uh, this idea is to write some like short lived uh, code snippets right next to to the actual code. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to creating a function. And I'm going to call that uh, get raw data with a with a with a full path to to a CSV file, and I fired up this uh, REPL and whoa, nothing turns up. Oh, I see. I have uh, forgotten to uh, the return statement. So I'm going to reload that function and rerun it again. So I have discovered a, a feature bug uh, quite early in my process. So. And what I want to do, I want to like continue experimenting because what I really want to do is to grab some parts of that data. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe a, some sort of list comprehension to get uh, get a hold of that name column. So okay, good. I get I'm getting a list of something there, and I'm going to store it in a variable because I'm. I'm going to I want to get rid of those uh, duplicates. So set perhaps is good. But wait a minute, I'm thinking about, yeah, a, a, like a set comprehension right away so I don't have to like write several lines of code. Great. Uh, so I have my list of unique values. I'm, I'm thinking of sorting it the other way. So I'm trying that reverse feature. Great. So it, this looks like a sentence, REPL Python driven development. And I think this is what I was trying to achieve. And I have basically written all code, so I'm just going to copy it and store it in, in something more permanent, in a, in a separate function that it will, use, will be used in, in the real world. And I can st continue with my, with my code snippets here to verify that uh, my new function uh, does what I have expected. So I'm selecting my result there and printing it out. It looks good. And I guess I'm done. So I can remove it. or I'm thinking this code maybe should be a unit test. So I'm renaming my fun my function here to something more permanent, uh, keeping that row there and adding us an assertion. And I can actually evaluate the, this code uh, too. So make sure that the assertion doesn't fail. Let's try with something that should fail. Boom, great. So this uh, test method does what it's supposed to do. So uh, the next step, I guess, is to just move it to a separate file. And that was it. Thank you.